Hi, uh, I'm Simona and I work at Data EQ and this presentation is about learning from your model's mistakes. First few words on Data EQ. Data EQ has been founded in 2013 by four French guys and it's uh, today headquartered in the US. Data EQ provides a data science platform uh, which works uh, across uh, all industries across the globe. It's for enterprise AI. And um, since last year, Data EQ is also a unicorn we are growing, we are currently hiring, so don't hesitate to have a look at the uh, offers on our website. And so machine learning models make mistakes and uh, model debugging and error analysis are necessary steps in the iterative process of model design. Any data scientist after training a machine learning model needs to investigate uh, its failures to understand which subpopulation the model is performing poorly. He needs to build intuition about uh, what are the problematic features correlated with the error and what are the feature, feature values typical of failures. Usually this kind of analysis is performed manually, but this is ineffective and time consuming. So here we focus on how to provide the scientists with an automatic tool to simplify model error analysis. The first key step behind model error analysis is to break down the error because there might be several reasons why a machine learning model is making mistakes. And if we try to um, treat all the error as a whole, it's actually quite difficult to make sense of it. If you um, imagine to take all the misclassified force in the popular MNIST dataset, for instance, it's very difficult to understand what's going on there. But if you consider, if you group the different um, predictions by predicted class, you could make sense of the error that is behind it. For instance, some fours, they look like nine, some four look like seven, etc. So actually segmenting the errors in meaningful clusters allows to have an easier analysis. And actually model performance predictors or also MPP, they can help automatize this step. So let's see how performance predictor work. First, we have a primary model under investigation. So it's the primary model we are studying. For instance, you can take a primary model that is predicting the price of houses. And so this primary model also has an associated test set and we uh, compute the prediction of the primary model on the test set and we categorize it as either a success or a failure. Then we have a secondary model that is our model performance predictor. So it's a binary classification model that is trained on the test set features and also on this binary um, categorization of the prediction as either a success or a failure. And so this secondary model is trained to predict whether the model, the primary model succeeds or whether it fails. Usually we take a decision tree classifier as a model performance predictor because it's easier to interpret. And so this decision tree would uh, will cluster different type of errors in the failure segments. Those are the, the decision tree nodes. And so each node group uh, samples with similar features and model performances. And um, actually a failure node represents a specific different kind of error. And so those are meant to be studied individually and to simplify the analysis. Model performance predictor exists for both classification and regression tasks. If we have a classification, classification task, the failure is defined as a wrong predictor class, but we could also go deeper in the analysis and maybe categorize uh, any uh, failed predictions as uh, like a false positive or a false negative per class. If we have a regression task, the failure is defined a bit different. It's a large deviation of the prediction from the actual value. And this definition requires also defining a tolerance threshold above which um, the deviation defines a failure. And uh, this is computed as uh, a knee, the knee point of the regression error characteristic curve of the regression model. And this allows actually that the absolute error of primary predictions stays within tolerable limits for those predictions that we defined as success. Also here in regression, we could consider more levels of error and not only a binary uh, threshold. Now we have built a model performance predictor and we need also to gather information from it, to gather some insights about the error behind. 
So the MVP can actually have a complex structures, many nodes, and we need to highlight the data that is relevant to failure and discard all the rest. So how can we do this automatically? First, we can select the most important failure nodes by size and purity. And then when we have a look at one specific failure node, we can look at the features correlated with the error. So those ones, we can um, gather them, um, for instance, by ranking the features by the performance predictor feature importance, which in case of a um, decision tree is the mean increase of impurity. But we can also have a finer analysis if we take importance measure that are local to the node. And so those, gives us, uh, those give us um, the critical features for a specific group of errors. And one example of doing this is to use the mean sharp values of the samples inside uh, that fall under a specific failure node. One important tool to get insights from the uh, model performance predictor is this discrimin discriminative local versus global analysis. In particular, we can compare all the samples that are in a failure node against the global population, which is mainly successful um, if we've done a good job with the model. And so um, this could be like a baseline, a background against which we compare what's going on in the failure node. So if we look at the distribution of the critical features in the node versus this global successful population, if there are differences, we can um, have an idea what are the subpopulation on which the model is failing. Like in this example, if we take back the example of a model, a primary model predicting the price of houses, here we could um, understand that uh, the model is failing to predict the price for uh, houses with very large living rooms, maybe because these are underrepresented in our training set. Uh, we um, are using models that usually they uh, are trained on preprocessed features, and actually preprocessed features are not good for interpretability, as you can guess. And in general, model debugging on preprocessed data is not ideal. So what we need to do is to use um, some tools, for instance, scikit learn pipeline, to undo this preprocessing and to visualize the human readable feature values. And this allows to have a, a clear explanation of what's going on. For instance, in this same illustration that we have here as before about the surface of the living rooms, we have negative numbers. So it could be even a little bit misleading and we can be puzzled by this visualization. Instead, if we can undo the preprocessing, we will have a, a clear human readable value. And so uh, now it's time to connect the dots and put all together. Uh, if you are interested in model error analysis, you can um, perform this procedure I explained in this presentation, but you can also use an open source package uh, that we are publishing soon that uh, for, provides an error analysis tool for second learn models, and it also supports pipeline models. So it provides an error analyzer to analyze the model and train a model performance predictor, and also an error visualizer to display the perform performance predictor tree and also feature distributions. As I said, it supports pipeline. So you can, in few lines of codes, you can instantiate an error analyzer on both a second learn or a pipeline model and to train, um, to fit it as set to train in model performance predictor. And afterward, you can use the visualizer to visualize both the error tree and feature distributions. And this package automatically, the failure nodes more, more important, they are highlighted and also the feature that are more correlated with the error are automatically um, highlighted. Also, um, you must be aware that actually a model performance predictor is a predictor of performances. So you can also use it as a model on new data that is not uh, uh, labeled, and you could get hints about um, your primary model performance on this new data. Like for instance, in this example, you could say, hey, look, those observations, your model will probably fail here. And this is useful information. In particular, if we put all together, so we have a trained model for a start, and we fit a decision tree on the errors um, in the test set to build our performance predictor. Then we can have a look at the segment, uh, the, at the failures nodes, and um, we can have a look at the features that are more correlated with the error in those failure nodes. At this point, we have two options. 
uh, either we gather enough information to go back to model design or maybe to improve our uh, data collection process, or we can still use our model on new data to predict possible failure on some data. And then we can um, select this data and send, for instance, uh, for manual inspection instead. So here I put some uh, references for the model performance predictor for the course readers, but you can also ask any question you have in mind now. And thanks for watching. <laughs>